Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to start the service today with the Lord's Prayer. So can we all stand? Let's all say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. A few weeks ago, I started a series, not knowing at the time, on the kingdom of God. And, of course, the first one was Your Kingdom Come, which is what we've just uh, prayed. First thing that we pray for in the Lord's prayers, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Your Kingdom Come. We're praying that the Kingdom come. And that the reason for the Kingdom to come is that, that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why the Kingdom is here. Amen. And um, I want to look at the very last statement, which we just read, and, and it says, "Then yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. So the kingdom represents God's sovereign rule in heaven and on earth. The power is God's immeasurable ability to bring about his will and rule on earth. See, the, for God's will to be done on earth, God's power must manifest. So, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and then the glory is in recognition of his sovereignty and power when demonstrated. So, we can never really pray your will be done on earth without expecting God's power to manifest. And I think this is where the body of Christ has maybe just lost focus because the kingdom is a kingdom of power. Today's message is called the kingdom of power. And God's sovereignty and rule is situated in heaven, but it is exercised in his kingdom. And God's unlimited ability to implement his rule is realized by him employing his power. It's about power. Amen. So, you know, every day at school, I don't know, if I'm, or, I don't know how many years I was at school, like 10, 12, whatever. But every day at assembly, we do the Lord's Prayer. But we never, we're never taught that this isn't just a prayer to open the school day with. It's a prayer that is focused on the kingdom of God's power, yes. you know, being visible. Because we're praying that the kingdom come, that God's will be done in heaven, uh, as, on earth as it is in heaven. Well, that can't be done without power. So this is a kingdom of power. And the Apostle Paul knew this. The uh, passage that, uh, that John read, 1 Corinthians four, uh, 2, verses 4 to 5, says, And my speech and preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration, say demonstration, demonstration. of the Spirit and of power. Wow. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You know, he knew there was power there. He knew that, that he couldn't preach or teach or do anything except 
with the Holy Spirit manifesting the power of God. Otherwise it's just words. And you know, you go to some places and they read the Bible and they do, but it's just words. So the difference is, it's got to be spirit power. Paul boldly declares that his speech and preaching were not with persuasive words, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Dynami, Greek word. The Greek word power is dynami. And it, it's not natural human power. It's supernatural power. It's miracle power. Today you're going to feel it, you're going to experience it. Because the kingdom of God is here. Amen. Amen. Later in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20, Paul makes a profound but brief statement. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. But the kingdom of God is not in word. It's interesting that the word there for uh, the word for word, the Greek word is logos. So, ah, well, it's the logos. But you know that logos doesn't represent power. How do I know that? Because so when f- faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, it's rima. See, spirit word and word delivered by man are two different things. And this is what the Apostle Paul is pointing out. For the kingdom of God is not in the word, logos, but in power. The kingdom of God is not in word alone, but in demonstration of power. And that's why he was saying to them, listen guys, I'm not going to try and persuade you. And and let me tell you, he was a clever man. Probably one of the most equipped men that ever walked walked this earth. But he never saw himself as being clever and intellectual and to try and persuade people with abilities that he had. You know, I mean, he was a, a scribe, a Pharisee. He knew all the stuff. But he said, no, no, I not my words. Even though I could take the scriptures and I could persuade you with them, it has to be a demonstration of power. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5, again, just one verse, Paul says, For our gospel did not come to you in word, logos, only. Now there is a word that is preached, but it's not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know, what kind of men we were among you for your sake. So our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. Hallelujah. And in the Holy Spirit. And then he introduces the person that makes the Logos a Rima. The Holy Spirit. Amen? So I could just flip the word open and just read it to you. And if the Holy Spirit is not breathing life onto it, it doesn't do anything to anyone. You know, just ink on, on, on paper. But the Holy Spirit, wow. And that's the difference. But you see, the kingdom of God can't expand without words and demonstration of power. So you've got to have the word, but then demonstration of power. If it was just word alone, then 
There would have been revival after revival after revival. What's really interesting is that it wasn't just the message that validated what they were preaching, but it was the power. The demonstration of power by the Holy Spirit. This was the fulfillment of what Jesus prophesied in Acts 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power, dynami, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. God's kingdom is a supernatural kingdom. It is a realm that is authenticated by the Holy Spirit's power and not merely by a message, which is just man's words. I have always been fully persuaded. And, you know, it's always with fear and trembling because I empty myself before I get up here. I don't want one drop of me up here because the word can only be delivered under the anointing, under the, the Holy Spirit's guidance. And he breathes life onto it. That's why faith is built. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rima, not the logos. Why did they, that word rima appear there? Because Logos doesn't build faith because it doesn't have power. You need the Holy Spirit's power. So when an anointed word, when the Holy Spirit has breathed life onto something, it, it goes out and it touches and changes hearts and minds. Now when you're sitting there and it feels like God's just spoken to you, personally, that that is a, a message, a word for you. <clears throat> That's Rima. Because Rima literally means the spoken word. So when God's speaking, it's Rima. And when God speaks, you go, oh, Pastor, you were reading my mail. No, I wasn't. This is the Holy Spirit. He knows everything. Without the Holy Spirit breathing life onto God's Word, it cannot impact on the minds and hearts of the people. And it doesn't produce faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rima. The Greek word used here is the spoken or living word. It's when God reveals something to you. And you get that sort of you know, light bulb moment where bing, or pull it right into your heart. It's like someone throwing a javelin at you and it's like, oh, this is straight into my heart from the throne room. That's Rima. The word alone, Logos, cannot produce power. Listen to it. For the kingdom of God is not in word, Logos, but in power. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, Rima, of God. The word alone, Logos, cannot produce power. It requires God's spirit. And that's the Rima for it to be powerful. And listen to the Amplified Translation of Jeremiah 1, verse 12. Then, the, then said the Lord to me, You have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. God's watching over his word. Whenever you speak his word, he's watching over it to perform it. But you know what? He performs his word by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus went and sent us the Holy Spirit, that was one of his functions. As God watches over his word to perform it, perform it the Holy Spirit does exactly that. The word without spirit is void of power. 
But God is watching over his word. Ah. And angels hearken to the word of the Lord. They hear it. They hearken to it. Why? Because God spoke it. And they cannot do anything but obey it. So the power of the Holy Spirit is behind the kingdom message. And it is proven and certified by works and the methods of Jesus. The miracles we see throughout the Gospels and in the book of Acts are kingdom signs. What is a sign? Simeon. It's pointing to something. The church and the world both need to see more signs, evidence that the kingdom is here, that it exists. Amen. If we can be kingdom-minded, then all the things we read in the gospel will become a reality. Because Jesus focused, focus, I don't know if you watch The, the Chosen, but what's really interesting is that the focus, and you see that Jesus' focus was all about the kingdom. It's like, guys, do you understand that this is where I rule? This is God's rule. This is God's sovereign place here. We need to be more like that. The world needs to know that there is a kingdom here on earth. Amen. God's kingdom. And it's a kingdom of power. Amen. So it's not with wise words and persuasive words, but with power. Miracles, signs and wonders did not stop when Jesus died. Amen. I went to the cross and was ascended and is seated at the right hand of God. They didn't stop when the apostles died. They didn't stop when the age of the early church ended. In fact, Jesus himself says in John 14, verse 12, Assuredly, I say to you, he or she who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Jesus openly declared, because I go to my Father, miracles will not cease. In fact, you will perform them, and even greater deeds than these you will perform. Now most Christians wish that wasn't spoken out, prophesied by Jesus. But he spoke it out for a reason. He saw it. Remember him sending out the 70 dudes, 72, whichever translation you're looking at, and they come back and they go, whoa, even the demons are subject to your name. It's like, you know, they were, yeah, because that's how the kingdom operates. The kingdom is about God's power being demonstrated here on earth. The church needs to plug into the power source of the kingdom. That is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Only then will we see what Jesus saw and foretold in John 14, verse 12. Because I go to my Father, the things that I do, you are going to do also. But even greater things than these. Hallelujah. He saw it. So I believe that that has come and I want more of it. Yes. Not a little dabble, do you? There's never been a more appropriate time. In Matthew 12, verse 28, Jesus said, But if I'm casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. He's basically saying, listen, 
if I exercise my authority over demons, over all kinds of evil, then <laughs> the kingdom has arrived among you. I want to tell you today, the kingdom has arrived among you. Jesus cast out demons not only because he had compassion upon the afflicted, but also to demonstrate the presence of the kingdom of God here on earth. This verse makes clear that the kingdom of God isn't we're going to heaven. And one day in the by and by. No, no, it's about the now. The kingdom of God is the presence and power of God on earth. The kingdom of God is the presence and power of God on earth. Say it with me. The kingdom of God is the presence and power of God on earth. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is God all powerful in heaven? Absolutely. Whether it be demons, as Jesus just said, casting out demons, sickness or disease or poverty or any kind of evil, God's presence and power is here. It has arrived among you to overcome them all. It has arrived among you to overcome them all. This is the kingdom power. This legitimizes, authenticates, substantiates, demonstrates the kingdom. Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The Greek word for oppressed there is under the control of the devil. He went around healing all who were under the control of the devil. Tells me that healing and the devil's control, when you break the devil's control over someone, they get healed. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God. He focused on demons, but he went around healing and doing good. So whatever it is, whether it's demons or sickness or disease or poverty, God's presence and power is here among you. It has arrived among you. That's the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to validate, exhibit, and demonstrate the existence of his kingdom here on earth. He wants to do that. But the church has not fully realized that this is a kingdom matter. When we congregate, it's because we congregate in the kingdom. We're not in the world congregating. We're in the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is power. Hallelujah. It's peace. It's a place where God's authority, God's presence is, is, is here. But here's something else. As believers, we've been given the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. The very power of God is available to us. Resurrection power. So that we might do the works of the kingdom of God. God has empowered you to be his anointed vessel in every facet of life. Wherever you go, you take the kingdom of God with you. 
the very Spirit of God, the anointing, is with you to use you in every situation for God's kingdom purposes. The kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom of God is among you. Therefore, the authority, the power of God is among you. Not with persuasive words, but in demonstration of power. And the Holy Spirit guarantees that. If Jesus was here, that's what he would do. But he's not here. He says, you know what? I can't send you. I can't do it. But I'm sending someone to you who will do it through you. He's the Holy Spirit. Let that be your calling card, as it was with the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus said, you know, this is about the kingdom. This is about the kingdom. This is where I rule and I reign. This is where my authority is exercised. This is where, because wherever he was, that's where the kingdom was. That's why he said that it has, the kingdom has arrived among you. Me! That's why demons go, they called him Lord. Why? They were in his kingdom. Wherever he was, the kingdom of God was. And it's a kingdom of power. All he had to do was speak. Wow. Everything changed. Whether he was walking on the water, stilling the storms, you know, delivering uh, people, the blind, the deaf, whatever he was doing was his domain, his kingdom, where he rules. Now, he's gone and sent us the Holy Spirit. We still abide in that kingdom. It has arrived among us. And therefore, the authority and the power of God, because the presence of God is here, by the Holy Spirit, the, the power of God needs to be demonstrated every time we get together. Amen. Not with words of wisdom, persuasive words, but in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And God will never let us down. That's right. Our gospel did not come. The good news did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God's word did not come to you today in word alone, but in power and in the Holy Spirit. So if you have a need today, and, and I mean a need, I, I don't care whether it's that small, whether it's unbelievably impossible. All things are possible with him. But you're in the kingdom, and it, it has arrived among you. Therefore, the presence and the power of God is here. If that's you, I want you to stand where you are. Stand up. Is this the power of God? Amen. Amen. In his kingdom. Okay, what your need is. Hallelujah. 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 For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. Vinami. Miracle power. Amen. Supernatural power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And all of you on YouTube or on Facebook, you can stand as well. You can stand for someone. It doesn't matter whether they're here or in another country, the other side of the world, you can stand because you know what? The power of God is not limited by territory. The power of God is a spirit realm. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you right now. All these people here that have specific individual needs. Some small, some great, some enormous. Some seemingly impossible to deal with. But I thank you, Lord, that there is no impossibility with you, Lord. That your Holy Spirit's power is here. Because the kingdom of God has arrived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. That we can receive that power by the Holy Spirit to deal with every single circumstance, situation, whether it be healing or deliverance, whatever it is, financial whether it be material or in relationship, it, whatever it is, I thank you that right now, because it is in the kingdom, because your people are standing in your kingdom, that your presence and power will be demonstrated in their lives. And I declare wholeness and soundness in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare prosperity and peace because of your kingdom, Lord. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven. Thank you that right now that power is released. As I extend my hands towards these people, I thank you that power is released. Now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Receive it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Resurrection power. The very power that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quickening your mortal bodies. Quickening that situation that you're in right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickening your finances in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Start receiving it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. You're going to feel a, 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 an energy. You're going to be revived. You're going to feel like your, 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 your strength has been renewed like that of an eagle. You, you know, that, that sort of negative thing that has cloaked you, that, that has come upon you, is not there anymore. You'll want to run and dance and do things because God has done it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start thanking him now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. It is done. It is done. It is done to the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Amen.